Kalima, Gone with the Wind Immigrants in Spain and the Canary Islands will often hear the words, Oh, it's just a Kalima, are trotted out whenever it's a little cloudy or there is annoying dust in the air. In reality, it is not quite as simple as that, and the true Kalima is something to be celebrated as well as to curse, particularly if you suffer from breathing conditions and respiratory allergies. In the Canary Islands, the Kalima is often referred to as Bruma Seca, which is dry fog. It appears for up to ten times each year for a day or two, but in the worst cases can be present for a week or even longer. People with respiratory problems and allergies often suffer considerably during these periods. It's a time when sensible people try to stay indoors or wear a face mask when going outside for any length of time if they suffer from breathing conditions. Kalimans are usually, but not always, accompanied by very hot winds, and humidity levels increase. Residents are plagued with reddish dust on their patios and cars, which also invades every crevice of their homes. A Kalima occurs when dust from the Sarahe Desert is dragged across landmass by strong winds. Dust can remain suspended for hours and even days. Visibility is reduced and the air becomes cloudy as a result of the dust. And the Canary Islands are often regarded as having the best climate in the world, but we're not immune from the devastating effects of Kalimas. The intensity of heat on the islands increases respiratory problems and allergies, as well as general oral health. The tiny particles of dust that are generated irritates the mucous membranes, which could have serious implications for oral health. Often, as a result of taking antihistamines to control allergies, the immune system fills the hollows of our head with mucus. The cavities are located above the mouth, causing pain and greater sensitivity to cold and heat when filled with mucus, because of increased pressure upon the upper teeth. Kalimas are not all bad, since the central Sahara was a lake in prehistoric times. The dry sand contains fertile remains of its once rich organic particles. These nitrogen rich components within a Kalima help to fertilize the Atlantic Ocean by promoting the growth of plankton, which forms the basis of the food chain that allows all sea creatures to survive and thrive. Climate change scientists believe that the greenhouse effect is minimized because the sea's microorganisms absorb harmful carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. In other words, the more the plankton in the sea, the less carbon dioxide in the air. However, it's a delicate balance, and too much dust in the Atlantic could create too much plankton at areas of low oxygen, which is not so good. According to researchers, Kalima dust from the Sahara helps to feed plants in the Amazon, since it acts as a fertiliser, which helps the rainforest to grow and thrive. There are also other complex interactions linking Kalimas to events that we do not yet fully understand. Some studies claim that the damage of hurricanes is reduced due to the effects of Kalimas cooling the water temperature that's needed for hurricanes to build. Around one-third of the natural soils that make up the Canary Islands are based upon Saharan dust that has been dropped on the islands over millennia. The rich, fertile soil on these islands have been enriched through the effects of the Kalima. Many suffer from the health effects of the Kalima or complain about the dust that has landed on their patios and cars. Maybe instead we should be grateful that it's feeding the luscious plants in the Amazon rainforest, fertilising the Atlantic Ocean for sea creatures to survive, as well as reducing the greenhouse effect that has such a serious implication for us all. You have been listening to Kalima, Gone with the Wind by Barry Mahoney. This is part of the Letters from the Atlantic series. You can find out more about me 
my books, blogs and podcasts by going to my website www.barrymahoney.com and thank you for listening.